Today we're going to be going over a touch bar that doesn't charge. This is an A1706 board, an 82000923, and there are some very common faults with this. With older machines, to get the one-wire circuit to work, you needed PP3V42 to be present, then SMC BCAC OK to be present, and then the charger would talk to the SMC, and the SMC needed to be on. Here, it's a little bit different as to what it is that you need, so let's go over how touch bars get a green light on the charger, as I like to call it, because it's just no fun to... It, this is no fun expressions for USB-C. The first thing to understand is that when you're getting charger communication, you're going to have a different voltage coming out of the USB-C charger than what you get if you're not having charger communication. If the charger is properly communicating with the chip inside the computer, the USB-C charger will know to put out 20 volts because it's a MacBook. If it's not communicating with the charger chip inside the computer, it's going to put out 5 volts. And a great way to tell this very quickly is to get one of these little USB-C amp meters, which I'm going to link to below, that makes this type of diagnosis very simple. When you have charger communication, it's going to give you 20 volts, which would be akin to having a green or an orange light on the older MacBooks that have MagSafe chargers. Whereas when you have 5 volts, that's similar to getting no green light on the older MacBooks that have MagSafe chargers. The first thing that we need is the PP3V3 underscore G3 hot power rail. And the reason that we need the PP3V3 underscore G3 hot power rail is because this chip that's over here, which I'm going to show you on the schematic. So this chip is going to communicate with your charger, the CD3215 A, B, or C, depending on your model. So this has many bi-directional data lines with the charger. It's going to be responsible for USB data. It's going to be responsible for USB 2, USB 3, DisplayPort, Thunderbolt, and charging all in one. That's what this chip does. And it has bi-directional data lines, as you can see right over here, with your charger. So this is going to go here, and then on the other side, that's going to go directly to your charging port, so to allow the CD3215 to talk to the charger. So just like in the old system, the MagSafe needed to talk to the SMC. Here, the CD3215 needs to talk to your USB-C charger. Now, this chip is going to want a certain power rail to be present. And that power rail is PP3V3 underscore G3 hot. But where do we get PP3V3 underscore G3 hot from? What chip is responsible for creating PP3V3 underscore G3 hot? Well, that's a great question. So the first thing that we need here before anything else is an enable. U7000, which is the ISL9239 chip, available, by the way, on store.rossmangroup.com. Don't delay. Buy today. This chip is going to be responsible for creating PMEN P3V3 underscore G3 hot. This is going to enable that rail. Now, this signal over here is going to then go to the other side of the board to U6903. U6903 is going to be responsible for creating our P3V3 underscore G3 hot rail. Once we have created our P3V3 underscore G3 hot rail, that is then going to go over to the CD3215 chip over here and allow this chip to turn on, which will then allow the charger to talk to the, the chip on the board. So see, this is our CD3215. This is our bi-directional data line over here with the charger, but for this chip to turn on, we need PP3V3 underscore G3 hot. This is going to be very, very important. So, first thing we got to do is check and see that we're getting PP3V3 underscore G3 hot. So, let's do that here. So, I'm going to go back over to that chip that creates PP3V3 underscore G3 hot, which is U6903. It's going to be right over here on the board. And we can measure on L6900, which is going to be right next to that chip, right over here, and see if we're getting that signal. So we're going to turn on that microscope, and we're going to check and see what voltage we get over here when a charger is plugged in. We get zero volts. Now, what is the symptom that you're going to get when you have zero volts there? Well, that's a great question. When you have zero volts over here, instead of 3.3, the symptom that you're going to get is that on the charger, and by the way, you should have one of these USB-C amp meters. If you don't, it's going to make your life miserable. These USB-C amp meters are going to tell you how much power 
the USB-C charger is using when it's plugged into the system, unless it's this super buggy one that we just got in the mail. Let's see if I can get this thing to show you. So as you can see here, if it's telling me that we're using 5.2 volts. 5.2 volts. Now, that's no good. This charger needs to go up to 20 volts in order for it to turn on the machine. 5 volts is not good enough. If we were charging a cell phone, 5 volts is just fine. But USB-C can work at many different voltages. 5 is not the one we need for this MacBook. This charger has to go up to 20 volts in order for the system to work and actually turn on, right? But it needs to talk to the USB-C chip on the board for the USB-C chip to say, hi, I'm a MacBook. I'm not a cell phone. I'm a MacBook. Give me 20 volts. But that chip's not going to turn on because it's not getting 3.3 volts. So I wonder what could potentially be causing a short to ground. Let's just take a look around the board and see if there's anything that looks funny. Hmm. Ouch. Yuck. Gross. I wonder what that stuff is for. All right, we're just going to move right over here and see what that capacitor is in our schematic and board view. And it appears in the schematic and board view that that is a capacitor on the PP3V3 underscore G3 hotline. I wonder if that could be causing a short circuit to ground. Well, one way to find out, I'm just going to take my handy dandy pair of tweezers here and destroy yet another set of tweezers in service to this MacBook by going... Now, this area is heavily covered in underfill, and there's also this metal shield that you'd have to remove here. So this is a fairly nightmarish location to get to. But so we're going to trust the tweezers here. We're going to, there, GTFO capacitor. This little MacBook does not deserve a gentle treatment. Little MacBook. Die, little capacitor, die. Yes. Die, little capacitor, die! All right. Now, before we even do any cleaning and all that stuff, let's see if we get 20 volts on the meter now. I'm going to plug that in. And we are getting 20 volts now, which means that the charger is talking to the board. And as you can see, it's taking 0 0.74 amps. This is actually upside down because I'm terrible at doing online video. But we're taking 20 volts at 0.77 amps, which means that this board that we picked at random is completely fixed. And all it needed was one single capacitor knocked off the board. And this is very common on this machine where... where... It's very common on this machine where you only have to dr take one capacitor off and that's all it takes to make the board work again if you manage to choose the right board out of the pile. What do you think of that? That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. Happy Halloween, folks, and I'll see you in the next one. How can I help you? Uh, yes, Lewis, sir. <laughs> what can we do for you? Uh, he's an old friend from high school. What's your name? Uh, Richard Feynman. I went to high school, and I don't, I don't, I don't know a Richard Feynman. Oh, this is Lewis. How's it going, buddy? Yeah, I don't know you. You said you were a friend from I know high you. school. 
I, 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 well, I thought I was talking to your receptionist and I wasn't going to get through, so I said I was so Richard Feynman. So you think that lying is the way to go. That's, that's great, man. Yeah, good, good, no, good I, I think... Here.